<sighs> I'm feeling sad, KJ. You saw my last video, right? No, I'm thinking all this healthy intermittent fasting that you're doing just making you weak, making you soft. You're angry all the time. It's like you're a crybaby. You don't have to say it that way. I mean, sure, I'm sure I got problems like my YouTube channel and marital problems, childbearing. Carbs. I'm sorry, what? Carbs. Like carbohydrates? Yeah. But the carbs are bad for you. <laughs> That's why you're so soft. Why are we talking about carbs? Because they make you happy and you don't seem to want it. Well, sure, I do occasionally enjoy pasta and rice and burgers and pizza. Don't deny it. Don't deny your happiness. I'm not denying anything. Would you just- Just some sweet, crispy, big titty down your throat. Big titty? Oh, toast. Oh, toast. Sweet, sweet toast. <laughs>to visit my grandfather in Vancouver. And one of the fondest and happiest moments I've had there was eating one big fat, thick piece of toast. A slice of bread with butter and honey, humbly put on by my grandmother and just melt. It was a simplistic combination of like sumptuousness and luxury and just the combination of these various things executed with like a bubbling hot pot of coffee, milk and sugar was just amazing. And I always remember back to that time when I think about happiness. So I'm gonna take my childhood memory and amp it up a little bit because I've been feeling down lately. But first, you need to find the ultimate bread. It says here that all people eat this bread. I don't care, go get it. It's 100 miles away and coming back, that's like another 100, 100 miles. miles away from happiness.
Come on, take a bite out of life. You see what I did there? Raw toast, life toast. I can't, it's not even toasted yet. You're right. Life must be born from the heat of love. This is a Bermuda toaster. What some may deem as the ultimate toaster. Part steamer, part toaster, part oven. This legendary piece of technology. Shut up. Just cook the damn thing. I don't need any more of your exposition. Just like grandpa intended. Just one more thing. Herbs and flowers? Like France? Oh yeah. Sounds like you're trying to get all frilly and fancy. Come on, go ahead and judge me. I saw someone do this in Pasadena, California. Shake that shit. Dance around, dance around, oh yeah. Feeling better now? Mm -hmm. A tiny bit. You just literally ate life to restore your pathetic little life. What did you think was gonna happen? This cloudy, chewy, milky, and fluffy toast is an evolution of sandwich loaves. Pullman loaves, or pan de mie as the French call it. It was given by Americans to Japanese in post-war Japan. The reason they are called Pullman loaves is because back in the 19th century, George Pullman, known as the king of sleeper cars, you know, the one, the trains that you sleep in, chose its square shape so that he can more effectively store this type of bread within his trains. It saved money, but it also allowed more density of bread. Hence us calling it Pullman loaves. Even further back, European bread makers, they were actually using square tins at some point. It was in the 18th century and it was actually a way for them to achieve like a thinner crust that you see in the modern version of the Japanese shokubai. And now imagine the Japanese version. The Japanese love taking imports and taking that obsession to a maximum level where it almost becomes hedonistic. <laughs> The Japanese have birthed something to existence that takes humble toast and transforms it into a decadent experience like no other.